I promise you, Catherine, we're not just covering this because he's French. Uh, the headlines that we've seen over the last couple of days around his potential departure speak volumes to how important he is to AI. He's one of three people considered the godfathers of AI, receiving the Turing Prize along with Joshua Bengio and Geoffrey Hinton. Born near Paris and educated at what's now the Sorbonne, he's as much an engineer and a physicist as he is a computer scientist, ending up at uh, Bell Labs in New Jersey, which is a legendary lab. There he, um, he pioneered work on recognizing handwriting, which was used by banks across the world went via a New York University eventually in 2013 to Meta, which was at the time Facebook. Uh, Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, picked him to lead their AI efforts, and he did so uh, until the next, sort of, for the next five years. In 2018, he moved to a kind of advisory, but still very important role as their chief AI scientist, uh, leading a lot of the pioneering cutting edge work at Meta. And we can't understate it. This, the work he was doing at Meta was so important to AI today, the kind of AI that we're all using, because um, he kind of pushed this open source, open research approach, which allowed lots of other AI uh, companies to piggyback on the work of Meta and really led to the acceleration of AI that we're seeing today. Now, Peter, why is he leaving now? So we should say that this is according to media reports, but it's undoubtedly because of Lacan's change of heart when it comes to the future of artificial intelligence. He really thinks that the current all-in approach on large language models, and that's those all consuming data hungry beasts that drive the, la the like of ChatGPT today, he thinks that approach is a bit of a dead end. He'd rather be seeing everyone focusing their efforts on something called world models. Now to explain, rather than feeding uh, the, your AI, spoon feeding it lots of data or text um, to learn from, the idea with world models is that you create an artificial virtual world, a bit like in a video game, for instance, with its own uh, details and its own physics, and you put an AI into that world and it starts to interact with the world around it and learn that way. So it's almost like a baby learning than it is teaching a child uh, how to read. That, that's, that's the difference there. So that's his bugbear. He wants to see the world going there. But, you know, we can't not look at the politics of this as well. Um, he was obviously quite uncomfortable, uh, increasingly uncomfortable at Meta, which was taking a sort of bit of a right wing swing under Ma Mark Zuckerberg, given the rise of Trumpism. Um, when I interviewed Lacan at the Paris AI Summit back in February, I asked him about Mark Zuckerberg's recent comments that more masculine energy was needed in AI. Take a listen. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. That doesn't come into it. Uh, absolutely not. No, uh, I mean, the, the best way to make progress is you have, you know, a small team of talented people. You give them a long leash, uh, the means to succeed, and, and you, you, you let them invent the thing that needs to be invented without necessarily having a lot of time pressure, you know, to produce uh, uh, products. I mean, you need to do that as well, uh, but you don't get breakthroughs by directing large teams, you, you, you get that by, you know, doing research, la letting people invent completely new things. Hints there that he was desperate to have a smaller, more agile team than the one he found at Meta, perhaps, Catherine. Now, has the world been reacting to this news? Well, yes, of course, there have been lots of tributes from people who respect his, uh, his pioneering innovations and his uh, championing of open source. There have also been a certain amount of uh, gloating who see people as kind of a constant thorn in the side to the large language model status quo that we now have, and actually more gloating from people who do agree with him, but who point out that he himself used to uh, support uh, large, large language models. And what does this mean for the future of AI? Right, so Lacan certainly intends on keeping his voice heard. We know this just from his spat with Anthropic, another AI company in recent days. But whether his departure means that uh, his view is kind of sidelined or whether his new startup can make waves and make a difference, obviously we don't know yet. But Meta's approach might change, even more so than it 
already does. And because Meta is such a key linchpin, as I described, for all these other AI companies, that could have reverberations. Um, we know that Meta has spent billions of dollars hiring uh, expensive talent uh, to lead their new AI drive, the likes of Scale AI's Alexander Wang. Scale AI is known for their armies of people around the world labeling data. This is exactly the kind of work that Lacan criticizes and says it's not necessary if we take a world model approach. Um, as we know, it all depends on the whim of one man, and that's Mark Zuckerberg. And my counterpart on the French channel, Guillaume Crelle, has written all about Mark Zuckerberg's change uh, of tack in the last few years in his book, Pionier. I couldn't help but plug that one for us. Give it a read. It's, uh, it's a remarkable account of Meta's transformation.